Hi folks, as I promised, a video of how my Raspberry Pi aquarium functions and works. So this is the main aquarium, as you can see. So the the main part of the, the Raspberry Pi works under here. So here's underneath my sump. <clears throat> We've got my Raspberry Pi set up at the back there. That's connected directly to the internet wire overnet. You can see here we've got the relay box, which is what I was talking about and the smart ATO. So the way this is all connected up, I've got two pipes coming through for the wall. They come through from the kitchen. One's for water in and one's for water out. They both come through here. Now one of the pipes the water out. It goes up there and down there and as you can see maybe just at the back, the little pump at the back there that pumps water out. The smart ATO there, one wire of that goes to the main power for the ATO. It plugs in there. The other end goes through to a solenoid, which is down there on the water in, and that goes through these two carbon block filters to remove chlorine and chloramine from the water. And in between there is my ticker, which uh, essentially measures the flow of the water passing through. Now, these both go into two dedicated sockets. They go into this box here, which contains the relay. You can see I've got two little OD indicators as to whether there's power getting to the unit and whether either one of these two plugs are switched on. These are both wired directly into the Raspberry Pi and controlled by code within the Raspberry Pi. Additionally, coming out of the Raspberry Pi is a temperature sensor that sits down there. And then obviously this flow meter is also connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now, <clears throat> at the moment, nothing's running at all. There's no power getting to the ATO. There's no power getting to the pump out. If we move over to... <clears throat> so this is a... SSH connection to my server that's running for the Raspberry Pi. So I've got a number of services set up on here that run various things. But if I run the one for the wall to change, so I can run this manually for a script as I'm here. All of this all feeds through to, various, to a database and that allows it to run this website. So at the moment I set up my schedules on here that saves me in the database. What day I want, what time I want to run it and how many liters I want to change. The service on there searches for any schedules that are due to run and then will automatically kick off this script based on the amount. So if I now run that script, you can see there, query and water change, one liter. So it's now saying changing will take a total of one minute and ten seconds. Logs the actions on the database and starts running. If we move back down to the aquarium now, you can see that the water in and out lights have both come on. The pump started kicking off. Power is now coming to both the pumps. The water level has dropped. That's now filling itself up. Now it does it in such a way where it will sleep for the duration to make sure that water level doesn't drop too low and too quickly. It should only ever come on for about 30 seconds and then sleep for an additional 30 seconds to allow the water to fill back up again. We can see here that the water out is now switched on, switched off rather. The water in is still on, so that's now filling. You can see that that's now filled back up to the top level. The ATO has stopped filling water in is now switched off and the water on is now switched off. <clears throat> if we go back to our screen, it says water change is now complete. And we can see that this list here, which gives me a, a list of what was run, is showing that it ran less than a minute ago um, and when it started and how many litres of water it's changed. As you might have heard, my phone beeps, so I've got this connected to Push Bullet for Android, so that sends me a message whenever a water change is completed, how many litres it, it, it did and how long it took. There's another of other things that are worked out via the database, so obviously these fields up here keep track of the amount of water that's changed, so this ticker then changes. If we run another, another one litre water change, we'll see this changing, so we'll let that run. For one, one minute, ten seconds. We should see that as that water level drops, these fields start to tick up as that flow meter 
starts to, starts to turn. So we can see that's now going up. I can hear the water flowing. So this is quite useful for seeing how much water was changed in the last hour, how much it's been changed today, and how much has been changed over the space of a week. From that, I can work out whether the adequate amount of water has been changed in the week. If I refresh the page, this will update. I haven't got this to automatically update like these other ones, but that will show how many intervals have run today. So this would now show two. This is incorrect. Ignore that. I've done 28 water changes today. Obviously, using the temperature data from the sensor, we've got the current temperature on there. This graph shows the current temperature swing. It may look pretty pretty large from here, but if you look, it's actually really gradual. It does it quite intricately. So that's going from literally 20, just below 26 degrees, up to 26.0.8. So that's barely any change at all. But it will notice a lot of the time, this is when a water change has been done, the temperature will drop ever so slightly. And that just gives me an average. So if there's something disastrous over the, over the week, such as when our heating came on, it had enough impact, changed the average temperature up one. So it allows me to change the actual heater. This is a useful one because I always forget when I change the, the carbon in the block. So I input into the database the life of the carbon block and it will work out based on how much water I've changed, how much is left. So obviously you can see that I changed this only a few days ago. This will then drop down. When it gets to zero, it sends me a message. I know to change the carbon. Um, the sample water level isn't actually working at the moment. I've got a sensor for this, but it isn't actually wired up. Um, that there uses uh, sound waves, I believe, the sensor to tell exactly where the water level would be, and this should then show me exactly where the level is. We've got two switches here that allow me to manually turn on. If I click this, this should then turn the. You can hear it, maybe hear it beeping. Let's say it's come on, I'll switch it back off again. So, as I said, that's where I set up my scheduling. This is the statuses of that. So this is the main website. I can access this from anywhere and check to see what's run and what's happened. Um, there's also a, a health check service that runs on here. That's the health monitor Python script there. Now that checks for how much water I've scheduled to be changed and how much water has actually been changed. These these are, are not representative of that. You can't see them, but there is two. There's the ones that are saved against the schedule and the ones that the flow meters detect has been changed. If these differ too extremely, I think if there's anything more than five litres difference between the two, it's going to assume that something has gone wrong and it will cut all power to both of them, regardless of what state they're in, um, and send me lots and lots of text messages and alerts so I know that something's disastrously gone wrong. That same health monitor also monitors temperature. If it drops too low or too high, I'll get an alert to say that something's gone wrong. Tested this yesterday by pulling it out and putting it in a cup of tea, and that worked perfectly fine. I've got an alert two or three minutes after it happened, saying the temperature has gone too high. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the moment. Um, there's a few other things that I, I might end up doing with this, but at the moment it means that I can schedule my water changes and, and not have to worry too much about what it does. Thanks for watching.